Well, I think that's marvelous. So we got all kind of surprises. And you know what may happen? Jesus could come and surprise us. Hallelujah. Would that be wonderful? Would that suit every heart? Hallelujah. He can't come too soon for me. Hallelujah. I've got so many wonderful people up there, church folks, my husband, my oldest girl, and uh, she's got uh, two of her children up there. Besides, you got Daniel. Oh, you got Daniel and John the Revelator you've been wanting to talk to. Oh, yes. That, oh, yeah. Isn't and that going to be find Woo! out? <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> so nobody rings the bell. We're going to feast on heavenly food before we feast on the natural. Hallelujah. Put God first. And, uh, you know, when you have rain during camp meeting time or revival, it's a good uh, symbol <laughs> because the devil thinks I'll keep people away. But you're already here, so just stay <laughs> and enjoy the word. I hope Sister Ruth sings for us some, and then she will minister the word. How? Beyond the moon and stars, you are, you are. Beyond the moon and stars, you are, you are. Beyond the moon and stars, you are, you are. I want to consider you. consider to consider you I want to consider to consider you I want to consider to consider you I want to consider you from eternity to eternity you are you are from eternity to eternity you are you are from eternity to eternity you are you are I want to consider you sing with me I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider you. No need for melody. Without you, there would be no need for melody. Without you, there would be no need for melody. I want to consider you. I want to consider to consider you I want to consider to consider you I want to consider to consider you I want to consider you consider the lily 
how it grows. No toiling, no spinning, yet it grows. Consider the lily, how it grows. And you will consider me. I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider, to consider you. I want to consider you. Halamabari bi 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 bi. Karaborabasi bi hai. Yalamarandaramo. Oh. Hallelujah, hallelujah, for yea, thou livest closer to eternity than to earth. Yea, thou livest closer to eternity than even unto now. And I would lift thee up into those things that are eternal. I would lift thee up greatly by my spirit, saith the Lord. For yea, I desire to sit down with thee. I desire to commune with thee. Yea, not concerning the earth, but concerning me. And if thou wouldst be lifted up, Yea, I would show thee those things that I have prepared for thee that are eternal. For I would loose thee from the pressures of time and I would bring thee into a realm where thou wouldst move by my spirit according to eternity. For I would place eternal values within thee. I would place eternal desires within thine heart. I would give thee a focus that thou wouldst see only those things that pertain unto eternity. For I say so much of thy time and attention is taken with that which passeth away. But I would cause thee to see those things that shall remain and abide forever, saith the Lord. I am working in thee. I desire to sit down with thee. I desire that thou wouldst sit down with me in my throne, even as I am set down with my Father in his throne, saith the Lord. Yea, for thou dost think that these things are hard to attain unto, but it's just as easy as desire, saith the Lord. For if thou shalt desire the eternal, yea, thy very desire shall bring thee into that eternal realm, saith the Lord. For yea, I say this unto thee, thy ministry shall be increased and enlarged only in relation to my glory. For those other things, yea, they have sufficed. For the times pass, but a new day is dawn, saith the Lord. And thou must move into greater glory, greater glory, greater glory. 
saith the Lord. For yea, the glory brings an ease. The glory, the glory, the glory brings an ease. And I shall bring it into thy life and into thy ministry, saith the Lord. Struggle not, strive not, but yield thyself to me. Yield thyself unto that holy thing that is being birthed even within thee, saith the Lord. Be not afraid of the holy. Be not afraid of the holy. Be not afraid. Draw not back for that which is holy. Cometh even from mine altar, saith the Lord, sanctified, purified, glorified, brought forth to work miracles in these last days, saith the Lord. Could it be, 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 just lift up your voices. For 40 years, the Lord led his people, not by Moses, nor by Joshua, but he led them by the cloud. Amen. Hallelujah. It was the cloud that led them. A whole generation of people led by a cloud. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. If God did that in, in 
former times. What does he want to do in this Holy Ghost age? Amen. Hallelujah. 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 A people that catch, catch a glimpse of the glory that resteth and rise up and follow it and know when it's resting and know when it's moving. Oh, hallelujah. Sing with me. Let the glory bring forth ease. The ease and the glory. Let the glory bring forth ease. Ease in the Spirit of God. Let the glory bring forth ease. Ease in the glory. Let the glory bring forth ease. Ease in the Spirit of God. Oh Lord, your way is in the heavenly. I love your way, oh Lord. Your way is in the cloud. I love your way, oh Lord. Your way is in the heavenly I love your way oh Lord your way is in the cloud let's give the Lord a good clap offering Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> I'm reading from Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. And I'm going to start reading from verse 10. I spoke on these verses one day a couple of weeks ago, but in the morning, but I feel this morning I'd like to speak on this. <clears throat> that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. If by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead, not as though I had already attained, neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Notice this. Not as though, verse 12, I had already attained, either were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which I am also apprehended of Christ Jesus. 
I believe that one of the things that the Lord's doing in camp meeting time is that he's bringing people into a consciousness of why God has brought them into the world. Hallelujah, I believe although man has a free will, God has eternal purposes that he has brought us into the world for. And it's nothing worse than to live all of one's life and never move into those eternal purposes. The apostle Paul was a very successful man. He studied at the feet of Gamaliel, the, one of the learned teachers of that day. He in every way was nothing but a success. He had the proper uh, credentials as far as his family was concerned. He had the proper educational credentials. He had even the proper credentials concerning his, his job position. Amen. But still, he had not come into the place for which he had been brought into the world. And it was not until he was on the road to Damascus hallelujah that he began to reach out for that which was reaching out to him hallelujah as Jesus was reaching into his life he began to reach out for God and into the very purposes that he had been born and now even after all of his successes in God hallelujah he's already made his missionary journeys he's now writing as late as the book of Philippians and he's writing and saying it's not as if I've already attained if anybody had attained the apostle Paul had certainly attained from not not only the natural but the spiritual but he said it's not that I've already attained but he said I'm pressing oh hallelujah I'm reaching forth I'm reaching unto those things that are before there were several phrases that stood out to me in the service this morning most of you that know my preaching style I usually listen to hear what the Holy Ghost is saying in a service and I oftentimes uh, just get up and sort of summarize uh, what the Holy Ghost has been saying. Uh, there were several phrases that stood out to me this morning. Uh, one was that reach out and grab it. I felt that God was speaking more than a miracle uh, concerning your finances. Uh, Hallelujah. He, he was speaking more than just the answer to your problem and the answer to your need. Hallelujah. He's saying there is a, a realm in God that you can reach out into and you can take a hold of and know you've got it just as much as if you were picking up a prize after at the end of a game. You can know it. I think many times we're afraid we're afraid that uh, uh, and have the thinking that somehow this spirituality you're not quite sure when you get it and if you've got it you don't know you have it uh, and you spend the rest of your life uh, trying to discern whether or not you've got it or don't have it uh, or hope you do and somehow that it's elusive but if somebody said to you, do you have $100, you would know if you had it or not. Amen. Amen. You'd reach out. If it were available, you'd reach out and take a hold of it and bring it back. Put it in your purse, in your pocket, in your bank account. You'd put it somewhere. You would know what you had. Hallelujah. And I believe that we've got to begin to take a hold of those things that are eternal 
as God was speaking to us this morning, we've got to know it. We've got to know we've gotten a hold on it. We've gotten the handle on it. Amen. Hallelujah. It's ours. We've taken a hold of the very thing that God took a hold of us for. Amen. Hallelujah. That we're not walking in any sense of aimlessness, but we've taken a hold. You say, well, someday I know I'm going to be a preacher. Take a hold of it at this camp. Amen. Anything that you feel that someday you're going to do for God, let that someday become today. Hallelujah. Take a hold of it in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you said, but there's no chance to preach today. Well, it's like Brother Heflin said the other night. He said he knew the exact moment that his faith released that tent. Amen. How was it? He he took a hold of it, amen, at the altar as if it were his already. And when the actual material came, praise the Lord, that was not the time of the arrival. He apprehended it. He got a hold of it with his hands and with his spirit and with his faith. Hallelujah. He apprehended that for which God had apprehended apprehended him praise the Lord hallelujah I was very challenged by that word reaching out hallelujah God's requiring a, a greater reaching out amen if you don't reach much beyond what you came to camp with camp meeting as far as you're concerned is a failure and it's not a failure from our standpoint it's a failure from your standpoint because you haven't reached beyond reached forth into that which is and brought it back for yourself hallelujah you have to do the reaching we can show you where the prize is amen we can show you the form the place to reach unto but you yourself have got to reach just a little farther hallelujah forgetting those things that are behind and I don't want to, to go much into the forgetting part but sometimes we have to forget our past successes to reach into a new success in God sometimes you have to forget the things you already know to reach into to a new realm of knowing sometimes you have to forget that which you are to reach into new realm of being sometimes you have to forget all of those things which are in order to reach into that which you shall be in Christ Jesus hallelujah hallelujah forgetting those things that are behind I reach forth <laughs> into those things which are ahead praise the Lord I love that chorus this morning our God is an awesome God I believe that's the direction that God wants us to reach into God in his faithfulness always points the direction he wants us to know the glory, not only in the shout, not only in the rejoicing, not only in that wonderful rest that comes in the glory, but he also wants us to know the awe of God, hallelujah, in which God is so manifest that you can't say a word, amen, you can't do a thing, that all of God, his presence is so overwhelming, you can only stand in that presence, hallelujah, praise the Lord, hallelujah, I've experienced it, on occasion and more and more God has been good to me to experience that awe
But I believe this. I believe he wants a greater manifestation and demonstration of it. Hallelujah. He will bring it forth as we are ready to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oftentimes, even with those who are ministering, God cuts something short that could have continued longer because the people are not yet ready for it. Amen. Hallelujah. But as we collectively reach out into that which is before, <laughs> oh, hallelujah, reaching out into that which is before and taking a hold of it. God gives us in his faithfulness glimpses into the new day. We don't always see, see the new day clearly, but we have glimpses into it. And the reason God does this uh, is because he wants, uh, he wants us to get a taste uh, so that we still proceed forward. Uh, we move forward into those things uh, that are of the spirit uh, and not of the flesh. Uh, hallelujah. A number of years ago, I came back uh, from a trip, I came into our, into our fellowship in Jerusalem. In those days, we were praying four hours a day collectively. Uh, these days, we don't have the staff. And because we have to do keep uh, everything functioning, we pray collectively uh, just an hour a day now. But in those days, we were praying four hours a day. And when, we came, when I came in... I suddenly felt an awe of God like I never knew. And in that awe, I just had just walked into the prayer meeting. It just was just as obvious as a piece of furniture in a room. It wasn't at all elusive. It was there, tangible. You could touch it almost. And I suddenly knew in that moment... How easy it is to raise the dead. How easy it is for people, uh, multitudes, uh, cripples and wheelchairs and all the rest uh, to be raised out of it. Amen. In a moment's time, I saw the ease that comes in the awe of God. There is a glory that brings forth that awe of his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It lasted several hours. And I've always remembered it. Because I believe this is what we're reaching unto. Amen. Hallelujah. We're reaching unto that day. One day, uh, one night in the middle of the night, uh, I had an experience in which I was lifted up into the heavens. Uh, and I saw this last day revival. Uh, I saw a platform that was so deep. Uh, it was, uh, I've been on very wide platforms, but this platform was as deep as it was wide. And on the platform were at least a hundred stretcher cases. And they were there because of that great healing power that God was manifesting. And I saw ABC and NBC and CBS news reporters and TV personalities standing by to interview. Amen. The people. Oh, hallelujah. That's what the revival is going going to be like in our nation greater than anything we have envisioned hallelujah and God is saying I want you to reach out unto it don't be satisfied where you are even if you're up the road a half a mile beyond everybody you know keep on moving amen hallelujah don't judge yourself by the snails amen amen don't judge yourself by those that are that are happy and content because God has the challenge of the Holy Ghost that's in our midst and and 
Sister Rebecca gave that word concerning considering the Lord. If we begin to consider the Lord. And one of the wonderful things about worship is this. Is that when you begin to focus your attention upon the Lord in worship. You see him in just a limited way. But the more you declare him. Hallelujah. The more you know him. Hallelujah. You may see just the fringes of his majesty. But as you say, Lord, how majestic you are. You're so majestic. Suddenly you begin to feel that majesty. It comes down upon you like a garment. Hallelujah. You begin to see him and consider him in ways you've never considered him before. Oh, hallelujah. When you consider the Lord in worship, that's what, uh, that's another word. As you're worshiping, you're considering him. You're very, you're, uh, as the Spirit searches us out, and, and that's what the, the Holy Ghost does. The Spirit of God searches us. He doesn't search out just the negative. Sometimes we think the Holy Ghost is just wanting to show where we've fallen or failed or missed God, but that Holy Ghost searches out the longings within us. The Holy Ghost searches out the deep desires within our soul. The Holy Ghost searches out the abilities that we were not even conscious that we had to pour out our soul and praise and worship unto the Lord. But as the Holy Ghost searches us out, as we worship, the Holy Ghost searches out God in our behalf. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That deep within us calling to the very deep of God and thank God the Holy Ghost begins to reveal the Lord to us as we find ourselves considering I wonder this about God I wonder that suddenly the revelation comes and we know him hallelujah we know him in dimensions and ways that we've never known him before. I think that oftentimes we shy away from verse 13 of, of Philippians 3. Not verse, 30, verse 10. That says that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. I think that we oftentimes shy away from that verse because although we want to know him and we want to know the power of his resurrection, it's that fellowship of his sufferings that we're not quite sure about because we don't want another trial, another test, another persecution. But do you know that in worship you can have a fellowship of his suffering? Amen. In that very experience of worship, you don't have to go through all the sufferings of Jesus, but as you begin to worship the Lord, he begins to reveal himself. I remember years ago in Hong Kong, we had a great outpouring of the Holy Ghost among Chinese young people. They had never seen a revival before or since in Hong Kong to equal what God did in that year. People like Brother Summerall traveled to Hong Kong just to see what God was doing. But night, uh, Saturday night after Saturday night, uh, 
these young people would gather uh, not knowing the Lord, just pagan young people uh, saved, filled with the Spirit. Uh, and God began to teach them by vision. And I, I, I recall these young people that hardly knew who Jesus was uh, before they fell out under the power, didn't know really the story of the gospel yet. Uh, they were going through the agonies of the cross. Hallelujah. They were experiencing it by vision. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Even though they had just come in, they were coming to know the fellowship of his sufferings. Praise the Lord. Years later, we were living in Nice, and I won't go into the fullness of the story, but we had uh, several movie producers that were visiting us just outside of Nice. One of them was a pseudo-Christian from Holland. Another was a member, <coughs> a Muslim, a member of the Shah's family in Iran. And the third one was an atheistic New York Jew when I suggested that we pray, suddenly this pseudo-Christian that didn't know Jesus but at least had been raised in a, in, a, in a nation that considered itself to be a Christian nation, he began to say... He began to say after suddenly having, having an experience of salvation and the baptism of the Holy Ghost, a moment later he said, you really are the Son of God. He began to describe the vision of seeing the Lord in his sufferings. You are, you really are the son of God God taught him and brought him into the fellowship of his sufferings by the spirit hallelujah praise the Lord he went on to uh, he, he, for a number of years he would he, he would write to sister Alice uh, who uh, was staying on in Nice uh, and uh, this producer began to put the Bible in poetic form from that experience that day. He started with Genesis right on through, putting the Bible into poetic form because he had had an experience of the fellowship of his sufferings. What I'm saying, there's so many things that we really don't consider about the Lord. We draw back for one reason or another, probably protecting ourselves from any further hurts, uh, protecting ourselves from any, uh, anything that might at all be painful. Uh, but we don't need to do that with Jesus. Uh, hallelujah. We can come in and say, Lord, show me your suffering. Let me know the power of your resurrection. Lord, show me yourself. He delights in revealing himself unto us. Oh, hallelujah. And certainly we want to know the glorified Christ, the King of glory. Any experience that John, the, the, the revelator had, you and I can have. Amen. Hallelujah. In Daniel's day, the books were sealed. They were closed. But not in our day. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the day of the open vision. This is the day in which God delights to teach his people by the Spirit. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let us, uh, let the Lord cause us to begin to consider him. Consider him. Consider him not only his life on the earth, but consider him this day seated on the right hand of the Father coming soon in clouds of glory. Hallelujah. The Lamb upon the throne throughout the endless.
endless ages of eternity. You say, I'm just a little humble believer. These things are beyond me. No, they're not. In the natural, they might be. But I have seen the Holy Ghost take people with limited advantage in the natural and reveal the most beautiful things about himself because it's done by the Spirit. We know a man that when he got saved, he couldn't read the Bible and every day angels came and sat down beside him and taught him the word of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We could stand here all day telling you the supernatural. We don't live when we come into the kingdom of God. We're translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his own dear son. And from here on in, we live in a world Hallelujah, in which God works by the Spirit and causes us to know by the Spirit. And I've seen children that could hardly say ABCs and yet... They had had revelations of heaven beyond any adult person. Why? Because it's by the Spirit. We want to reach in, reach out unto those things that are before and press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus when I was prophesying earlier this morning, I was very conscious that so much that is being promoted today in areas of ministry is going to burn up with the test of fire. Things that we consider to be modern and, and beneficial to the body of Christ they are only entrapments to keep people uh, from being taught by the Spirit. Uh, but he still delights in being our teacher. Uh, and the Holy Ghost has been given unto us uh, to teach us. Uh, hallelujah. To teach us. Uh, to lead us into all truth. Uh, hallelujah. And we can trust the Holy Ghost. Uh, reach out unto Somebody's just telling me uh, the Kansas City meeting. The person was telling me in a very positive sense, but they were saying that there had been correction for Brother Paul Kane, who's got that tremendous word of knowledge at the Kansas City meeting in, Ju in June. But one of the things they were correcting him for because he didn't preach in an orderly manner. And he didn't give down one, two, three, and he didn't have his points. A man that stood up by the Spirit and told you your name and your address and your need and your, your situation, a man that God could use to reveal the hearts of the people. And yet the whole American church has called him on the carpet almost because he's not preaching very orderly. So many of the gifted ministries, Catherine Kuhlman was not a great preacher and Brother Branham was not a great preacher and many of the people with great giftings in God, it was the gift that made room for them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And when America comes to the place that we have a meeting and call people from all over America to correct a man of God that's not orderly in his message we're going to see the hand of God coming upon people and bringing some siftings listen it's not by the understanding of man if it were the Oxford folks and the Cambridge people and everyone else would be at the head of the class but God hath chosen the poor <laughs> of this world. He hath chosen the base. He's chosen these other though to confound that which is wise in the natural. Oh, kababa shandai. Why? Because it's of the spirit and not of the flesh. 
any of us that have the Holy Spirit have the potential to reach into the heights of glory and live in the realm of the revelation of the Spirit of God, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth, hallelujah, unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus oh pokora biande horabashi alamandai hallelujah hallelujah tikorabashandai and our heavenly father we just believe you for every one of us here today we don't want to be those that follow after natural success nor natural means nor natural advantage but we want to follow after the spirit and if the spirit Spirit leads us into the wilderness. Let us be willing to go into the wilderness wherever the Spirit of God leads us. Lord, that we'll be led by the Spirit. Cause our spirit to be alive in thee this very day. Let a quickening of the Holy Ghost come across this great tabernacle. Let's just pray in the spirit a moment. Oh, Babaristi Alamaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we want to reach out. Reach out. Reach out into that which is above. Oh, Corisi Amandaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, oh hallelujah, praise the Lord. Let's just gather here at the front, could we do that? Give me a, let's see. Oh let the precious things of heaven fall on me. Let the precious things of heaven fall on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the precious things of heaven fall on me. Amen. The things of this earth charm me no more. Let the precious The Lord said to me that the big plus is knowing what's precious. Amen. Amen. Sometimes we walk away from the precious things. Mother and I years ago went up to hear Brother William Branham in New York at St. Nicholas Arena. And on Sunday morning we went to the Rock Church. And of course, I was just a child, so I'm excusing myself a little bit, but I might have been just as bad if I hadn't been. And there was a lady preaching, and she was weeping and crying. And I kept nudging my mother, interrupting her. I don't know if I wanted to go or what I wanted to do. And finally, she just had enough, and she said, Ruth... This is what God brought me to New York for. She says, I'm being so blessed by this lady's ministry. Sometimes we're not aware of the precious, but God wants to put into our spirit 
Hallelujah, such a consciousness of those things that are precious. And if we know what is precious, hallelujah, if we know it and we know it by the Spirit and somebody tries to steal it from us, we're not going to let it go. Amen. If we know what's precious, hallelujah, we're going to want a lot more of the precious. Amen. We're going to know what to search after. Hallelujah. We're not just going to search after the fleeting, the transient, those things that are only temporal, but we're going to reach into the eternal. Just reach up and let it come down on you this morning. Oh, let the precious things of heaven fall on me.
I see that God's brought Brother Dwight Jones. Amen. Give him a good clap. He's just come in. And he'll be ministering this afternoon in the 3 o'clock service tonight. Brother Heflin will have a great ministry in the evening service. Mother, did you want to say something? And then uh, all next week, Brother Dw Jones will be ministering. You'll be blessed of the Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Jones, we welcome you, and I think some of them were a little troubled that you wouldn't get here, but I knew you would, <laughs> hallelujah, because I said I expect he may be driving, I don't know if he did or not, but they were waiting for a phone call at the t about the time you come. Yeah, where is Brother McLeish? I promised him something. Just jump right on up. I disappointed him the last time Ruth preached. Thank you. We all come uh, called to be different places at different times in our lives. And we've all been blessed in many ways here. And we can search into our heart and look in a mirror and see the many blessings that we have received. And those blessings have enabled us to go forth no matter where we go in this world and shine our light. And as our light, that we hold the light of Jesus Christ high. And we sometimes in all of our all, we forget the sacrifices of our brothers and sisters in what they do for us. And, and I would... I would like to talk a minute about the Heflin family. That each and every one of them has paid a great price for the price for the high calling of Jesus Christ. And they have pressed forward to the mark. And I would like us today, before we leave, to remember this family in our prayers, but to remember them in a special offering this day, a love offering. I am asking us to give from a position of strength, the strength of the Holy Spirit, because it is among us and it is with us this hour. I am asking us to press forward the mark, and I am asking us to join a family which has dedicated their lives pressing forward that mark. So what I would ask us to come this morning, and there'll be some buckets in front of the offering, it is not the size of the amount that counts. It all belongs to him. It is not ours. It is his. He has given it unto us. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let's sing that a couple more times. I think there are some offering buckets there. You folks have been lovely. God bless you for your sacrifices. Thank you, Joe, for saying those nice words about us. We've been blessed more than you have. Praise the Lord. Oh, let the precious things of heaven fall on me. Thank you. 